Hi folks, the golden ratio part that we did as a Wednesday widget, we did some of our most unusual Fusion 360 cam toolpath tweaks and creative, I don't call them hacks, but definitely more than I've ever done before in controlling where and what depth I wanted these toolpaths to go to help create the window machining. Let's walk through that. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. The cam for the part otherwise was relatively straightforward. We did a 3D adaptive and then a rough scallop and a finished scallop. I didn't get into a lot of the detail behind uh, really the window machining aspect of it, which is I want to trim down the area around this subject to leaving a little bit of material. So I've got to be very conscious of my heights and I need to control where this tool path or this 2D contour starts and stops. And that's not is easy to do in Fusion 360 because you can't really pick a partial contour. So let's go ahead and recreate this. Hop back into Model or CAD, Sketch, Create Sketch, and I'm going to just I'm going to put it on this plane center right here, which happens to bisect the part right down the middle. P on your keyboard for project, and click once on this shape right on the line rather right here. It puts a purple line around the outside periphery of the part. If I turn off the model body, you can see that's what we've got. I'm going to leave it off because it's actually a little bit easier to see what we're doing. Sketch point. We're just going to do one for now. Let's say we wanted to do a new one here at sort of the angled uh, 2 o'clock position. So I'm going to put a point right there. L for line. I'm going to pick a lot, uh, draw a line that's sort of like a cord uh, between two points along the projected toolpath. D for dimension, and I want this dimension to be 0.25. If I double click it, you can see that was dimension D56. So D for dimension, I want this one to also be D56. You could make, make them equal as well. That's actually incorrect. That was uh, the wrong dimension uh, location. See how that's kind of at an angle? I want it to be in line. Let's try that again. Uh, I'm sorry. No, that is correct. The other thing you can do, which is a little bit crazy, is <laughs> after you click the two points, you can right-click and change it to aligned, which is what I want. So right click, you can choose between aligned, vertical, horizontal. I don't like that workflow at all, um, but it does get it done. Oops, I want it aligned, D56, cool. So what that does is it creates this cord between these two points, it's parametrically linked. The problem is that it's blue, so it's blue because right now I can still move this point. So what I'll do is click on that point once, and I'll choose fix or unfix. That should turn it green. It's a little bit hard to see, but that point is now green. Now, I believe this is a glitch because that line, I think, is fully constrained. I can't move it in any which way. And it makes sense because it's co coincident with the purple projected line, and it's limited in its direction off of here. I'm going to change this to an X construction line. Now, this is where I got stumped for a minute because I then wanted to make this arc section here a partial contour. I couldn't do it. I kept going to sketch, break, and it just wouldn't break. And I, I and I don't like this. I think the reason is because it's a projected sketch, which is unfortunate. I don't see any philosophical reason why or mechanical reason why Fusion shouldn't let me break a projected sketch. Someone let me know in the comments below if there is, or maybe it's just something we can try to request and get them to do. So what I did is I right-clicked, actually just like last week's Fusion Friday, click on the purple line once with your left mouse button, right-click, and choose Break Link. What I don't like about this is it's now no longer parametrically, parametrically linked to the solid model. So if I changed my shape, I want this stuff to update, and that no longer will happen. Kind of a bummer, um, but won't actually matter for what we're trying to do here right now, at least. Now I can do Sketch, Break, and if I click on the chord section right here, you see you get the two, or not the chord, the section of uh, the profile, you'll get the two red X's, and that will 
turn that into a section. What I definitely don't want to happen is for this to move, because right now if I accidentally bumped it a little, uh, you may not even see that or notice it, and it, that would definitely violate your solid model and, and ruin your part. So I'm gonna click on this and choose fix. So it turns it green, and now that's locked into place. I could even toggle the body back on and kind of make sure it didn't look like it moved. And so that's it. I've got a line section or a line segment, which I now in cam can choose as one of my contours. The problem, what else I need to do, is I want to control, it's actually very important, the height of this toolpath. This is the tricky thing about this part, is that it tapers uh, along the floor. So when we have a height setting like model bottom, that's gonna pick the lowest point of the whole model, which is way down here. I need a point relative to kind of where I'm at. So what I did, and I, maybe there's a better way to do this. This certainly works. It feels like it's a more steps than you'd like to have to do. Is I did construct plane tangent to face at point. So I click on the, uh, you don't know what to do, let your mouse hover, it says select a point and a face. So I don't, it doesn't appear to matter which order you do it in. I'll click, pick the face first, and I'll pick the point. I now have a plane that's tangent at that point. What I can now do is hit L for line. What sketch or plane do I wanna work on? I wanna work on the plane we just made. And where's my, oh yeah, it's right there. And then I can, what I can do, so I wanted it to snap to, and it doesn't want to snap to because it doesn't see, even though it's on that plane, it doesn't, it hasn't automatically projected this bottom line. So this is going to be really weird. Take a look at what's about to happen. I have, where are you? This plane we just made right here. I'm going to hit P for project. I'm going to click the bottom of my golden ratio part, and you can actually see what it's going to do. It's a very strange projection. I'm okay with it. It's projecting how that part would intersect on that plane. So if you look at it from, I don't know for sure we're going to get it. It's kind of a mid uh, here. If I click the look at right here and I click this, you can see that purple line lines up with the bottom shape of it. But when you start orienting, it looks quite strange. Regardless, what that lets me do is hit L for line. I can now pick that point, and it'll snap to the point down there. I'm going to click it once, hit X to change it to construction line, because all I really care about is that point. Stop sketch. Go back to cam. So what I did when I chose this toolpath, let's just duplicate this. Start a new one to show you guys. Fusion Friday. So I would right click, edit, just a 2D contour. The chain is going to be this green section. Make sure your red arrow is on the correct side, meaning it's uh, putting the toolpath on the outside of the part. Ooh, I get an error. Oh, because of the, maybe because of the point. <laughs> hmm. Let's just change the bottom height to model bottom just for now. Make sure we get a toolpath. Interesting. This is fun. So start simple. Let's change our contour to something normal like that and see if we get a toolpath. Good. I get a toolpath. Figured it out. That's too funny. I don't. It didn't do that to me before. When I select this section here, it's actually selecting a closed contour. So it's selecting that construction line. I've never seen Fusion do that before. Regardless, I'll hit the X and I'll hold down the Alt key. That's going to only select the green contour that I'm, I want it to. And what I mentioned about the red arrow is important because when you have open contours or partial contours, Fusion does not always do as good a job guessing which side you want to machine on. So right now, this would put the toolpath inside the part, which would obviously crash and ruin the workpiece. So clicking that red arrow once flips it to the outside. Click OK. But again, we had our bottom height set as model bottom. So it's going to drive it all the way down. Uh, I don't think it went all the way down because 
I have it set to two, a 20 thou above the model bottom. If we change that to zero, you can see it would go right to the bottom. So what height do I want it at? Right click, edit, and under heights, have the bottom height be, be from selection. And what I can now do is pick that point. And if I look, uh, I want to change it back to a 20 thou positive offset. So that's going to keep the lowest point of the toolpath 20 thou above that area of the point. So it'll taper a little bit. Uh, you know, I'll have a little bit more th a thicker tab here than over here. But nevertheless, that should get me what I want, which is a controlled 2D toolpath. I just wish it was parametrically linked. I wish I could keep that projection. Someone let me know if that's possible. That would be, that would be the bee's knees. Uh, and we should be able to do that, darn it. Nevertheless, I thought this was pretty cool. Window machining is really an awesome technique, something I want to do more of because it's such a good way to have confidence in your work holding, your part orientation, and getting good tool paths to make good parts. Hope you enjoyed, folks. Take care. See you next Friday.